In the 18th century, Western European nations started to expand their economic horizons. This new hunger for economic dominance over new markets was sparked by a few key factors. One of those factors was the pervasive economic theory of mercantilism. Mercantilism purports that the key to a nation's wealth is to control the most specie or bullion. Also, countries should only import goods so they could maximize the mother country's natural resources. Mercantilism also theorized that only limited economic growth was possible and that growth had to be achieved at the direct expense of other nations. Mercantilism was epitomized by the French colony of Haiti. The economy of Haiti was based on the production of cash crops by slaves. The French utilized a plantation system to achieve maximum productivity. The system was brutal and violent. At the outset of the colony, the mix of overwork and disease caused the indigenous native population to be exterminated. After the death of the natives, the French tried to replace the labor force with Europeans, but many died due to yellow fever. Afterwards, West African slaves were imported to the colonies as they tended to be resistant to the environment and diseases of Hispaniola. This form of chattel slavery was effective and at its height, Haiti was producing 60% of Europe's coffee and 40% of Europe's sugar. The cost to human life was extreme though. The average slave lifespan was three years in the Caribbean and the hereditary aspect of the slavery was rarely exercised. Over a million slaves died in French Haiti. Colonial plantation economies were not unique to French Haiti. All of the West Indies participated in this plantation system. Barbados and Jamaica were both controlled by Great Britain, with the latter having been originally founded as a colony by Spain. Although these colonies were not owned by the French, the way they functioned was nearly identical to that of Haiti. These two colonies followed the same plantation agriculture model used to maximize the amount of sugar and coffee that could be exported. They were also similar in that they were essentially death sentences for slaves. What fueled these enormous plantation economies in the West Indies was the transatlantic slave trade. In most colonies, it was cheaper to continually import new slaves than to have permanent and self-replacing populations. This slave trade fed into the larger triangular trade between Western Europe, Western Africa, and the West Indies. Slaves would be sent to the Caribbean in exchange for sugar, coffee, and rum, which would be sent to Europe to be turned into finished goods. These finished goods and other products, most notably guns, would have been given to West African slavers. The cycle continued and created a strong mutual dependency between the three areas that lasted for hundreds of years. The demand for goods from the colonies in Europe and the triangular trade created a positive feedback loop. As the colonies began to export goods in large quantities that were previously scarce luxuries in Europe, Europe's taste for and dependency on these luxuries grew enormously. The amount of sugar consumed annually by the average Englishman more than doubled over the course of the 18th century, and then quintupled over the following century. According to Jonathan Hirsch from the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School and Hans Joachim Voth from UPF and CREI Barcelona, the average Englishman became willing to spend 15% of his total income just on tea and sugar. Furthermore, annual plants like tomatoes and potatoes that were discovered in the New World became staples of the current European diet. Though this was a great time for European consumers, it was by no means a peaceful century. Europe was plagued with wars, the most notable of which was the Seven Years' War. This war was fought over American colonial holdings between Great Britain and France. On the side of the French were the Holy Roman Empire, German states, Russia, Spain, and Sweden. The victorious British side included Prussia, Portugal, and Hanover. The sheer number of countries involved in this conflict gave it the informal nickname World War Zero. As a result of the war, France had to cede the vast majority of its North American colonial holdings. Spain lost control of Florida to Britain, thus giving Britain control over all of North America to the east of the Mississippi River. Another large series of conflicts were the Anglo-Dutch Wars. Four wars were fought in total. The first was from 1652 to 1654, the second from 1665 to 1667, the third from 1672 to 1674, and the fourth was a century later, between 1780 and 1784. The wars in the 17th century were largely successful for the Dutch, but the fourth and final war cemented British colonial dominance.